In today's video, we're talking all about decimals and their operations. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So let's go ahead and get started with some examples. I do have some notes over here on the side just to keep in mind. With addition and subtraction, the rules are the same. You just want to make sure that your place values are lined up. And then something else that I like to do and tell my students is if you have empty spaces, just go ahead and fill those in with zero before you start adding or subtracting. So let's go ahead and add this one. Now we're just gonna start from the right and work our way left, just like we would with any normal addition problem. So we got six here for six plus zero. Seven plus four is 11. I'm gonna go ahead and drop down my decimal right there. And then eight plus two is 10, plus one more is 11. And then three plus one is four. So we get 41.16 or 41 and 16 hundredths. Let's move over to the subtraction problem. Again, I've got an empty spot right here, so I'm just gonna fill that in with zero. And now we can subtract. So zero minus five, we can't do that. So we have to regroup. This becomes a 10. So you can see that this is just like any normal subtraction problem where I'm, I'm just regrouping when I need to. 10 minus six is four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop down that decimal. That's really the only um, different thing or extra thing with uh, addition and subtraction. And then eight plus zero is eight. All right, so that's our answer for that. I have a couple here that aren't lined up for us already. So I wanted to show you how to do that. So we've got 81 plus 17.62. So let's start with 81. With 81, we know that the decimal is here after the ones place. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in a decimal there. And then that helps me to line up my 17.62. Some students find it easy to start with the decimal and then work their way out. So they could write the seven here in this place value and the one here, and then the six and then the two. That's sometimes helpful for students when they're first learning how to line these up with decimals. And then since I do have some empty spaces here, I'm gonna fill those in with zeros. So let's go ahead and start adding. Zero plus two is two, zero plus six is six, and then I'm gonna drop down the decimal. One plus seven is eight, and then eight plus one is nine. Okay, so there we go. Now we have 98 and 62 hundredths. With this subtraction problem, we have, again, another whole number that we're subtracting, but we know with whole numbers that that decimal shows up uh, after the ones place, so we can go ahead and write it in there if that's gonna help us line things up. But let's go ahead and write out 306.5, and then our 42 would go here in the tens and ones place under the zero and the six, and then our decimal, and then I am gonna go ahead and put in a zero there just to fill out that empty spot. All right, now we can start subtracting. Five minus zero is five. Let's drop our decimal down. Six minus two is four. Zero minus four, we can't do that, so we're gonna regroup. This becomes a 10. 10 minus four is six, and then we get two. Okay, let's move on to some multiplication and division problems. So again, I have some notes over here on the side, and we're gonna start with multiplication. So the first thing that we can do once we have our problem set up is basically ignore the decimals for now. We're going to multiply this as if it's 81 times 54. So I'm just going to ignore those decimals for right now and go ahead and multiply. So four times one is four, four times eight is 32. And we're gonna cross that out, drop down a zero. Five times one is five, and then five times eight is 40. Okay, so we see there that we don't really have anything different. We're gonna add just like we normally would. So four plus zero is four, two plus five is seven, and then we've got three and then four. Okay, so now that we are here and we've added up both of our uh, rows of numbers here, we're ready to go ahead and place in our decimal. So um, what we need to do is count up all of the decimal places in both of the numbers that we multiplied and then put the combination of those decimal places into our answer. So for 8.1, we have one decimal place for this number. For five, sorry, 0.54, we have two decimal places for that number. So that means that combined together, we have three decimal places that we need to put into our answer. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and then that's where our decimal is going to wind up. So we're counting from the right over to the left and then placing in our decimal there. So we get 4.374.
All right, in this multiplication problem, again, I don't have it set up stacked on top of each other, so let's go ahead and do that. When we are multiplying a whole number times a decimal, the rules, the same rules still apply. So we're not going to line up our decimals for multiplication or division problems. So since 21 has two digits and 0 0.9 has two digits, then I'm gonna line up those two digits right stacked on top of each other. And then just like before, I'm going to ignore that decimal point for right now while I'm multiplying, and then we'll put it in at the end. So nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18. I could cross out the nine and then multiply zero times everything, but it's just gonna be zero, so I'm going to skip that part. And now we are ready to put our decimal point into our answer. So the second number is the only number that has a decimal, so we just have to move the decimal in one time, so it's gonna go right here and we get an answer of 18.9. Let's talk about what we do for division. When you have a number with a decimal on the outside of your division bracket, so the number that you are dividing by has a decimal, then you need to move that decimal over as many times as you can to get it to the end. And these, just like in my notes over here, these have to match. So since I moved this decimal place over one time for the outside number, we're gonna move this over one time for the inside number. Now you'll notice that this has two more digits behind the decimal point, and that's okay. This outside number is the one that dictates what we do with the decimal. So since this only needed a movement of one place value, then that's what we're gonna do to the inside number two. And at this point, I would encourage my students to go ahead and move this decimal up top here so that we don't forget about it and so that we have all of our place values lined up when we start dividing. All right, so now we're gonna start dividing. We're gonna treat this like 3,675 divided by 21. We have our decimal in place, so now we don't have to worry about that decimal anymore, and we can treat this just like any other long division problem. So let's see how many times 21 can go into three. It can't, that's a zero. So I would just go ahead and put a zero in there as a placeholder. And this part is really important to make sure that whatever your answers are goes right above the number that you are dividing. Uh, because we have this decimal right here, we need to make sure that those place values are neatly lined up. So 21 cannot go into three, but it can go into 36. So 21 can go into 36, I believe just one time. If it was two times, that would be 40 something. So one time, so one times 21 is 21, and then we're gonna subtract. So as you can see, this part is just like normal long division. We're gonna drop down our seven here. 21 can go into 157. Let's see, two can go into 15 seven times. So I'm gonna try seven. Seven times one is seven. Seven times two is 14. Okay, now we can subtract, so that's zero, and this is one, and that's zero, and then let's drop down our five. 21 can go into 105, let's see, two can go into 10 five times, so I'm gonna try that. So five times one is five, five times two is 10, and then we subtract, it comes out evenly. So we get 1.75. Here we have a decimal being divided by a whole number, so, Again, remember what I said about the outside number kind of being the one that tells us what to do with the decimal point. Since this one doesn't have a decimal point, it's already a whole number, that means we're not moving the decimal at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up this decimal here and then start dividing. So six cannot go into five, but six can go into 54 nine times. So nine times six is 54. We're gonna subtract and get zero. Notice that when I'm doing all of my subtracting and bringing down, I'm not bringing down the decimal along with any of these numbers. I didn't for this problem and I'm not doing that here. Once we have that decimal placed up above the division bracket, then we don't have to worry about dealing with it anymore. That's the purpose of kind of taking care of that ahead of time so that we can just divide as normal. Okay, and then six can go into six one time, and of course that goes in evenly, and we come out with 9.1 for our answer.
Okay, that is all of the review that I have for you for decimals. I do have several other videos that I will link in the description that go along with this skill. This is the second video of my pre-algebra series, so I will have the links for all of those in the description as well. And I really would love it if you could like this video, if you found any value in it, and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me a lot to continue making more math videos for you. I'll see you next time.